Welcome to Electron Online and the next cycle, the thermodynamic cycle we're going to talk about is called the Otto cycle. Now Otto was a German physicist and the Otto cycle is a cycle that best represents the thermodynamic cycle in an automobile engine. And why do you think we call automobiles automobiles? You guessed it, it's because of Otto, the German engineer, German physicist who figured out that in an automobile this was the thermodynamic cycle that best represented the thermodynamic cycle of a gasoline engine and so we named automobiles after him, Otto. Quite an honor. Now, an auto cycle exists of two processes that are isovolumetric where the volume doesn't change and two processes that are adiabatic. So going from A to B is adiabatic, going from B to C is isovolumetric, going to, from C to D is adiabatic, going from D to A is isovolumetric. Going from D to A, that's where heat is being expelled, that's where the temperature is cooler, and we call that Q sub C for the cold expulsion of heat. And then we have QH, that's the heat being added to the gas here, going from B to C to uh, increase the pressure and get it ready to push the piston out and that's of course where the gasoline is being ignited right here going from B to C. And so how do we find the efficiency of an automobile engine? Well coming back up here we know that the efficiency of an engine is the work done divided by the heat added to the gas and the work done is equal to Q hot minus Q cold divided by Q hot. So we're going to come up with an equation based upon the thermodynamic processes here that equals this. So let's start with finding Q hot and Q cold. That happens at the, at the point where we have an isovolumetric process. For an isovolumetric process, the first law of thermodynamics uh, reduces because we have work being equal to zero since the volume doesn't change, no work is done. And so this goes to zero and delta U becomes equal to the heat added or, or taken away, which is equal to N C of V times delta T. So we can then say that Q hot and Q hot is equal to N C sub V times the change in the temperature. Now that would be going from B to C, that would be temperature at C minus temperature at B. And of course since that is heat added to the gas, we know that this is a positive quantity. Now heat taken away from the gas, Q cold, is equal to N C sub V times the final temperature minus initial temperature. So it would be T at A minus T at D. But since this is heat taken away from the gas, we know that that therefore must be a negative quantity. So really what we should say is that the absolute value of Q sub C equals this. And if we want to write that without the absolute value signs, we can say Q sub C is equal to the negative of that which turns it then into a positive quantity and then we can write this as N C sub V times T D minus T A. That's not a very good looking D. We'll put it right there. And so this now also becomes a positive quantity. So what we're going to do now is we're going to realize that we can now write the efficiency equation here simply in terms of Q H and Q C. Q hot and Q cold. So the efficiency coming from this equation right here can be written as Q hot, which is uh, right here, uh, N C sub V times uh, T C minus T B, and we subtract from that Q cold. Q cold is right here, and we want, of course, the positive uh, form of Q cold, which is this right here, which is N C sub V times T D minus T A, and divide the whole thing by Q hot, which is right here, and C sub V times T C minus T B. And now right away we can see that both the numerator and denominator in each term, you have an N C sub V, which means that this cancels out that. And so when, when we then simplify this, we can write that the efficiency of an auto cycle is equal to T sub C minus T sub B minus T sub D plus T sub A, when we apply this negative over there, all divided by T sub C minus T sub B. E. All right, we're halfway there. Because now we have to take into account the two adiabatic processes, and they relate temperature and volume 
using this equation right here. So we're going to use that equation for the adiabatic process going from C to D and from the adiabatic process going from A to B. So let's start with A to B. So T at A times volume at A to the gamma minus 1 equals T sub B times volume at B to the gamma minus 1. And likewise, we can go from C to D, that means temperature at C times volume at C to the gamma minus 1 equals temperature at D times volume at D to the gamma minus 1. All right. Now, notice that the volume at D and the volume at A is R times the volume at B and C. This R is a factor. It's what we call a compression ratio. That's why we use R for ratio. And so, in a compression ratio, we compress the gas from this volume down to this volume. So, we're going to replace volume at D and volume at A by R times V, and we're going to replace volume at B and volume at C by simply V. So, B and C first, we have B and C first, so we're simply going to call this volume. So, we have uh, T at C times volume to the gamma minus 1 is equal to, and over here we have T sub B times volume at B, which is simply volume, to the gamma minus 1. And then we're going to replace the volume at A and D by R times V. So at A, we're going to write this as T at A times uh, R times volume to the gamma minus 1 is equal to, and then here we're going to replace that for D, that's T at D times RV to the gamma minus 1. Okay, so the next thing I can do is I realize I have a V to the gamma minus 1 in every one of these terms. If I then take those two equations and divide both sides by V to the gamma minus 1, what am I left with? So on the first equation, I'm left with T sub A times R to the gamma minus 1 equals T sub B. And the second equation becomes T sub C is equal to R to the gamma, or I can just put it next, I can simply write it like this, which is equal to T sub D times R to the gamma minus 1. All right, so now I have a relationship that I can use in my equation right here. I can write T sub B as T sub A times R to the gamma minus 1, and I can write T sub C as T sub B, T sub D times R to the gamma minus 1. So I'm going to replace T sub B this one right there, and this one right there, and I'm going to replace T sub C, this one right here, and this one right here, but what they're equal to in such a way that now I reduce it to TD and TA in the equation. So, E is equal to, so instead of T sub C, I'm going to write T sub D R to the gamma minus 1. T sub D times R to the gamma minus 1 minus T sub B, which can be written as T sub A times R to the gamma minus 1, minus T sub D and minus T sub A. Divided by, in the denominator, instead of T sub C, I'm going to write T sub D times R to the gamma minus 1 minus T sub B. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pair these up. I have a T sub D and a T sub D right here. I have a T sub A and a T sub A right there. So efficiency can be written as, if I take T sub D and T sub D there, and I, I, I uh, factor that out, I'm left with a T sub D times R to the gamma minus 1 minus 1, because I factor out a T sub D over here. And then I can say minus, now I have T sub A, I already took the minus out, and then I'm left with an R to the gamma minus 1, minus 1. Oop, that's a terrible looking minus, minus 1 like that. That's a numerator. Divided by, and in the denominator, I'll have a T sub D times R to the gamma minus 1, minus a T sub A. Uh, that is indeed a T sub B. T sub B, I'm, ah, yes. This should have been, I didn't replace that one yet. A T sub B should be written as T sub A 
times r to the gamma minus 1. And then I can take my denominator, uh, that looks a whole lot better, and I can factor out an r to the gamma minus 1, multiply that times t sub d minus t sub a. So now the next step is I can factor out an r to the gamma minus 1 minus 1. So this becomes t sub d minus t sub a times r to the gamma minus 1 minus 1 divided by t sub d minus t sub a to the r to the gamma minus 1. Wow, look at that. Now notice that the t sub d minus t sub a cancels out. And if I divide this into the numerator, I will get 1 minus 1 over r to the gamma minus 1. And that, now I have to put that in a place where we can see that in summary, that's the efficiency of an auto cycle. So let me write that over here. The efficiency of an auto cycle is 1 minus 1 over r to the gamma minus 1. And let's then remember what r and gamma are. R is the compression ratio of the automobile engine. So if the compression ratio, is, let's say, is 8 to 1, then r would be an 8. Gamma is the ratio of the C sub P divided by C sub V. So let's write that down. So gamma is equal to uh, C sub P minus C sub V. And of course, for air, which is a diatomic molecule, that would be equal to 7 over 2R divided by 5 over 2R. And of course, the R's cancel out and the 2's cancel out, which is 7 over 5, which is 1.4. So for an auto cycle, which of course typically works with air, the gamma would be 1.4, and R is the compression ratio of the engine, how much the, um, how much the gas gets compressed in the adiabatic compression part of the cycle. And that's how you find the efficiency of an auto cycle.